What types of partial discharges are there? Well, very easy. It's external partial discharge and internal partial discharge. But we have certain subcategories. And in this chapter, in this channel, you find a couple of videos about corona, about surface discharge. I'm trying to get close to an internal void discharge as well. But let's first talk about the different kinds. So the easiest partial discharge many people could think of would be something which we call corona. So I have two uh, electrodes here. I have a ground electrode, I have a high voltage electrode, and let's say I have a tip over here. Example given, I have, um, I have a little bit of metal here. So let's say I have something like this. This is kind of pointy over here. I might have something like this or something like that. And um, very often the partial discharge inception voltage, there's a video about that, usually depends on, first of all, the distance between um, the sharp edge and the ground electrode, but very importantly, about how pointy they are. The pointier they are, the more likely it is that you have partial discharges. I give an example, and it is very oversimplification and rough thing, right? So this is kind of pointy. I could expect that this might start partial discharges if the ground electrode is not too far away, maybe already at five, six, seven kV. This one over here, I would probably say, well, you're probably safe up to, if this would be the pointy edge, they are probably safe up to, I don't know, uh, 40, 50, 60 kV. And uh, this one over here, this is probably somewhere in the area of, I don't know, 30 kV, 40 kV. So this one being tippy or pointy is the worst. This uh, comes a little bit later and this is the latest. So now let's talk about what happens. So let's say I'm, this would be my, my setup. I have, a, I have a pointy tip here. I'm going to have, if I understand electrical field lines, I'm going to have a concentration of electrical field lines right here. And if I'm starting um, with, with my voltage and I'm going high enough, so let's say the partial discharge inception voltage here would be just, uh, would be 7 kV. So at 7 kV, I'm going to have the first small partial discharges over here. And now if I'm turning it up, most likely these things getting more bushy, but we're also getting longer. The good thing is it's an external partial discharge. Very often I could see this with uh, either an infrared camera because it's getting warmer. Maybe I can have one of something that's called a daylight camera where I can see partial discharges even though there's daylight um, or it is darker in the room I can see them or very often I can hear them. So the idea is the more I turn it up, the more likely it is that these things get a little bit longer. They're not getting too long. Um, at least they shouldn't get too long because if they're getting too long, we are running into the situation where we might be able to actually have a full discharge. So this is Corona. This would definitely be an external PD. And here we have the internal part. So internal PD. And here I have two electrodes and I believe that let's say this is a solid insulation material in here. And now if I have something which very often we call a void, so void meaning is a small bubble of gas, then I have an electric field here. The electric field here is a little bit higher. Uh, we have a video about that and um, it's a little bit higher and we could have the first partial discharges in here. Most likely they happen in here. So now we have PD in here and it's happening over and over and over and most likely it's going to destroy our solid insulation material around here. So this would be an internal partial discharge. These are kind of harder to see or not, not be able to see at all. We can measure them or sometimes detect them. Uh, another possibility would be that let's say this is a laminated uh, insulation material, right? We have different layers of insulation, for example, old cables are like that, or if I'm wrapping something around a conductor, then I could end up where I'm having, um, uh, where I'm having a delamination and then have a void here. And then obviously the void can have discharges here or here or here, somewhere in the void. Of course, of course, a void could look like that as well. And um, that's totally fine. Um, if this would be a liquid insulation system, the voids are most likely to be bubbles. Either they're stuck in a certain place, example given um, on the paper um, insulation of a transformer, for example, or their bubbles literally are free floating and uh, they, sometimes uh, they happen very often. The partial discharge will usually disperse them. So we're having more or smaller ones or whatever. 
Another kind of internal partial discharge would happen on cables. So this is supposed to be the outer ring, this is supposed to be the conductor and this would be our insulation material. Yes, in reality, if the conductor is this small, the insulation would be smaller, but let's not get in the nitty and gritty here, we are in oversimplifications here. So let's imagine we have a protrusion over here, uh, for example during the laying process, or there has been a mistake during manufacturing, or somebody literally hit it with a hammer or with a nail or something like that, or there's a stone pushing in, and then we could have something which is called an electrical tree. And the electrical tree will probably start like that, it will create branches, and then I'm going to draw it much bigger so you can see it in the video, and then it will probably do something like this, and it will try to reach the other end. And this is what we call an electrical tree. The electrical tree, of course, can start from the inside as well. Very often this can be, is, is caused by either a manufacturing process or there are other reasons for, for this to do. For example, if the bending radius wasn't uh, looked at and the cable was bent too much, something like this could happen. And then we could have an electrical tree growing here as well. And very often they will try to follow the electric field lines that um, one could draw here. So that's pretty much it for the internal partial discharges. So the only thing that is left is in the middle. And this is what we would call a surface discharge. And here I've drawn a ground plate, I have an insulator over here, and I have an electrode. So this electrode would be HV and this would be ground. And if I'm looking at that, I can imagine how the electric field lines um, might start or might, might, uh, might uh, develop. And over here we're probably going to have a homogeneous electrical field, right? They should be all the same distance. However, because this would be at my high voltage electrode, the electric field lines here would probably be, be a little bit like that. And at a certain point in time, they would definitely be like that, but I'm not clever enough to figure out when is the first one happening here. I would need a software for that. So what is going to happen here is we're having um, something which is called a triple point, at least. This is how I had to remember that when I was in university and I went for my exam. And the most important thing is surface discharge, triple point. So what I have here is I have the triple point between a conductor, an insulator, and in this case, what I draw here was air. And then, most likely, it is an internal, uh, it's an external partial discharge because it's happening in air. However, this could happen inside as well. Example given in an oil filled transformer. In this case, this would not be air, but this would be oil. But the same characteristics apply. And if the partial discharge inception voltage over here has been reached or exceeded, we could have partial discharges that happen here. So, that's pretty much it for an overview. Um, just to sum up, Corona is usually external partial discharges most of the time. Voids delamination is usually internal partial discharges. Electrical treeing is usually partial dis internal partial discharges. And, and service discharges happen very often outside, but they can very well happen inside, especially in a transformer. And um, sometimes we even have a combination of void and service discharges. Example given, um, if I'm having a cable and um, I'm making a mistake on how I'm installing, for example, the end termination, I'm creating, I'm having an area where um, the um, service discharge phenomena concerning the electrical field lines happen, but at the same time it's an enclosed area, for example, if I didn't use the proper grease or I didn't do use enough mastic, and then I'm having a small void where a service discharge happens and then it looks a little bit different. Okay, thank you very much. Have fun with the next videos.